All right, y'all, hey, we are back out here. It's another beautiful day here in South Florida. It's your boy, the Iguana Man. And we have a friend with us. We got our buddy, Steve. What's up, man? From iguanaspecialist.com. How you guys doing? How's it going, Steve? How's right, it going, man? man? We're doing great. We're doing great. We're at my home in my backyard. It's gorgeous back here, bro. It's a jungle, man. Yep. I'm pretty sure there's some iguanas back here, yeah, right? A few iguanas, absolutely. There's raccoons, stray cats. We got the amoebas running around. We got a little everything Steve, back Steve's up. been posting some really cool stuff about these interesting lizards. That I'm not quite sure if a lot of people are aware of, okay? They're called green amoebas. And Steve right here, he's actually trapped several of them. He's gonna see if he can grab one out and show you. Oh, wow, look at that thing right there. Look at that thing, whoa. Ho, ho, watch out, he's, he's, good. he's good. feisty. I got him. Wow, look at that, y'all. So a lot of people have been seeing and saying reports of these weird ground lizards walking around they're fast and they're basically heavily populated in certain areas of florida so our boy steve right here at iguanaspecialist.com actually caught several of them and i wanted to come here and show you guys these things up close and personal so you guys can kind of see what they are Wow, look at these things, Steve. Oh, they want to get me. I'm telling you, they're not happy with me at all. <laughs> they are definitely they're not, not happy with me at all. I promise you. <laughs> so you're seeing these things. Can you tell me a little bit about the, the behavior of what you're seeing when you're when you're when you're catching these things, or what? Um, well, the way I catch seeing? them, I honestly I catch them in a trap. Um, it, they are so fast. They are one of the fastest lizards around. Uh, you're gonna play hell trying to get them. You know, with chasing after them. Any, like anything. That. Yeah, you're not. You won't get close enough to them with a catch pole. The catch pole's got to be. I mean, so lightweight. Everything. The line's got to be light. Um, I use a trap, but unfortunately, I cannot share the bait. But special bait, you got yeah. a special trap, yep. and obviously, you're pretty successful at catching them because in the bucket there are several other specimens. Yes. But this is another invasive species out here in South Florida that I just wanted to show you guys real quick. Look at these things right here: amoebas, giant amoebas, amoeba, amoeba, yeah. or the South American ground lizard, or the Amazon race runner. Now, it's a species of lizard, like I said, found in Central and South America and the Caribbean islands. As you can see, they have a streamlined body, a pointed head, and a slightly forked tongue. And they have very muscular hind legs. They can grow approximately 18 to 20 inches for an alpha, and both sexes have random black specks on the mountings along their side. I could show you how to tell the difference, actually. Really? Yeah. Okay. So your big males, your big ones, I mean, just like most animals. Yeah. They are more speckled through here. They do have that brown stripe, but there's that green speckle through here. Uh, the females are definitely smaller. Even a, your females also tend to have a green head, not all the time, but you see that's a very pronounced brown line going down the side. Yeah. That's a female right there. Awesome, awesome, Yeah, that's awesome. the way that I can tell. And in all honesty, it's nothing scientific. I could just tell by their behavior watching to, their like, movements yeah, while well, watching the male chase the female during during the, you know watching him follow the female and make his advances during mating season so so oh whoa so the male usually has like you said like kind of like a greener and more colors on them right yeah well more towards the bottom but they have more so you can see the brown you know the brown stripe that the males do have but like this one here this is uh this is a larger one well even though there are some splotches here you know, there's a there's a definite difference here between the difference in the splotches. This is more of a streamlined brown stripe going down the side. So when you look at those in there, you can see all the white spots. On, uh, most of those are going to be the males with all those spots. Oh, on the okay. Side. So okay. white white spots yeah, the and the bigger yeah. ones are, are are more yeah. than likely males. Yes. And in, in, on, and in all honesty, in the traps, I haven't caught any small. Just I haven't caught any small ones. I mean, they they I don't know if it's the, they're not going in there. They're too small to set off the trap. These set them off. Uh, with no problem nice nice now they live basically on forest floor off during sheltering underneath logs and leaf litters and they have they, they make tunnels y'all a lot of these animals out here they make tunnels so they might you might not see them on certain days but on the right day where it's sunny and they can come out and bask and feed then you will see a lot of them so guys the diet of these lizards is mainly insects okay they love grasshoppers butterflies cockroaches even beetles and termites and other insect larvae. Now they could eat frogs and other lizards such as anoles and spiders in captivity. And mealworms, guys, mealworms and crickets, obviously if they were pets, they would just absolutely destroy those. And during the breeding season, y'all, the females lay several clutches of eggs from March 
to December. That's probably why we're seeing a lot of them out yeah, here, that's huh? That's exactly why. I mean, they, I, matter of fact, it's funny you say that. Two of these were the large male following the female. So when the female actually, I had two traps side by side. The female went in the first trap, got caught, and honestly didn't even realize she was caught sitting there eating still eating still eating the you know what i was feeding him i almost gave you away my gave away my uh my secret there but it was still eating <laughs> what it, uh what i put in there um so the male wanted to get in there with the female following the female following the female and just trying you know couldn't figure out a way to get in the female's cage went in the other cage because they were touching and that's oh. how i got the male so but it was a male at, you know without you know without he was he was definitely oh, he, trying he, to pursue he was, her yeah, all he was, day he was absolutely courting her without a doubt interesting interesting all right y'all so guys these are actually, believe it or not, invasive species here in the state of Florida, um, just because they're non-native to this ecosystem. And there's not that much research to find out what are the negative effects over here, but we do know some positive effects of these animals is they do eat bugs, but th there's not enough data or research um, documented yet. Yeah. Well, in, without in a doubt, Ab absolutely. So, you know, a couple things with, um, as far as the native species, I've been down here, ah, oh, crap, so. 1990 uh i've been down here um so when i first got down here you see a lot of the green anoles the american chameleons there used to be a ton of them now in my yard i see a few more in my yard because i do control the invasive species in my yard for mm -hmm. the most part but you know you rarely see them i mean you go days and days without seeing them but you'll see 50 to 100 uh, other species you know invasive species, of invasive you know? species right I mean, yeah absolutely so so that right there is definitely some proof guys that these invasive species are having a negative impact on native animals and if they're eating the native green anoles who knows what other absolutely native animals they're eating they could be eating who who knows baby yeah baby anything well listen it's not so much that they're eating the babies of that species they could be eating the food of a native species leaving the native ah. species not enough to go around which you know which is part of the problem with the american chameleon they don't have enough food you know you see all the little brown chameleons or the cuban uh the, anoles, anoles. Yeah, the brown anoles yeah out here They've taken up a good portion of it. These things have actually exploded in about, I want to say the past five years where they've really, you know, they, they've got a foothold. You know, they've got a full foothold in a lot of areas. That's insane. So not only potentially can they be eating native species, but they will be com uh, competing for territory and food yep. of the native species. Yep. So it's kind of like a double whammy. Absolutely. It's kind of like a double whammy, y'all. So this is just, you know, one of the reasons why invasive species are not good in any ecosystem. Uh, they don't belong here and the native animals and territories definitely definitely can suffer well hey that was just a quick little video i want to give a huge shout out to our friend steve right, man. at iguana specialist.com uh he's over here in davie florida if you guys are having problems with these anivas and you need steve to come out there to trap them or any other animals you do other animals as well oh, right absolutely i do uh uh the spiny tail iguanas green iguanas raccoons some people want the possums gone i just you know um, most people don't. Most people actually want me to put them on the property, but um, uh, yeah, absolutely. If there happens to be a snake, whatever. You know. Okay. Hey, Steve, what's the best way to, for people to contact you, bud? Uh, uh, excuse me, iguanaspecialist at gmail.com. Iguanaspecialist at, at gmail.com. Gmail We're going to put that right here, also in the description down below. Also, okay. you guys can see his website right over there. Go check him out. If you guys are dealing with these invasive anivas right here or any other nuisance wildlife and you're in the Davy area, go ahead, give our boy Steve a call, y'all. He'll come out there, definitely secure the bag and get your problem under control. But look at that right there, guys. Absolutely amazing. Our boy definitely knows what he's doing. He collected all of these. And what, you caught all these in what, in a day, right? Uh, two days. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, in two days. So you caught all of these yeah. in two days. That's yeah. not bad, dude. Yeah. That's not bad, man. Well, guys, that's all we have for you guys today. Drop some comments. Let me know what you guys think about this new invasive species. And, um, you know, let us know what <laughs> what other trapping methods you think might be efficient if you have any experience. But uh, that's all we have for y'all today. We'll see you guys on the next video.